Ichigo Kurosaki is one of my favorite protagonists, period. And with the return of Bleach's anime, my passion towards the series and Ichigo as a character has risen to a boiling point. I have to talk about Bleach again on the channel, and I thought there was no better way to do so than talk about one of Bleach's best characters, Ichigo. Just like I did with my Why We Love Yuji and Denji video, I will be talking about Ichigo as a character and exactly what makes him so likable to me and the rest of the Bleach fanbase. One of the biggest things about Ichigo that I find to be extremely interesting is just how different he is when compared to some of his contemporaries, namely Naruto and Luffy. I absolutely love the goofy idiot trope as it makes for easily lovable characters, but Ichigo being really calm and reserved in comparison does something to set him apart for me. While he's nowhere near being edgy or brooding for most of the series, him being a somewhat normal person in a world full of weirdos is really fascinating to me. Don't get me wrong, Ichigo isn't normal by real world standards, but when you compare him to many shonen protagonists, especially shonen protagonists of his time, he comes off as comparatively tame. Ichigo being the straight man in a world full of weirdos and clowns creates an interesting dynamic that I personally find to be enjoyable and unique, specifically amongst the battle shonen of old. Ichigo won't scarf down an entire country's worth the food, he won't take a test and get a negative 5, and he certainly won't pick his nose and flick his boogers on someone else. He isn't that type of character, and for the most part, Bleach isn't that type of series. Like many of the Bleach supporting cast, Ichigo is a genuinely smart guy, and for the most part, he's also a chill one. He's the type of person that any introvert would be cool hanging around. He's the type of person who would say cool one-liners and actually seem badass. And he's the type of person that just seems kinda relatable. This isn't to say that other characters with differing personalities aren't relatable, but they go about displaying that much differently and most of the time much more boisterously than Ichigo does. Some people may argue that it is this down to earth nature that makes him boring and that's fine I guess, but I don't know, I'm completely fine with reading a story about a character who doesn't scream in my face and dress like a traffic cone. No shade to my fort. No shade to my favorite orange wearing MC, I mean, I love the guy, but I'm completely okay and in fact enjoy characters that skew towards Ichigo's end of the personality spectrum as well. For the story being told in the world that it is told in, Ichigo's personality is great. Now I mentioned earlier that I find Ichigo to be a relatable character and I know that that's a super milk toast take on my end. Like saying Ichigo is relatable isn't a new opinion by any means, but it's one that I think I have a somewhat unique perspective on. Because Ichigo, while relatable, isn't relatable because of the situations he goes through, nor is it his generally calm and collected attitude. I don't know about you guys, but my sword doesn't change shape and give me superpowers if I yell Bonkai, and I'm certain not as cool as this guy. Nah. What's so interesting and relatable about Ichigo are his flaws, his insecurities, and his points of weakness that lead to him having the goal that he does. Ichigo losing his mom at such a young age scarred him very deeply, causing him to feel the need to protect any and everyone that he comes across in his life and cares about. He decides that what he wants more than anything is the ability to protect those around him. The ability to prevent the deaths or injuries of his friends and family. On the surface, this seems like an extremely noble thing for Ichigo to want. The desire to save people, usually, is associated with altruism and a sense of bravery. But at the start of the series, I see Ichigo's desire to save people as a sign of insecurity on his end. Initially, Ichigo fights to save, not because the act of saving people is important to him, but because he doesn't want to lose them. It may not seem like there is a significant difference in what I said just now, but this mentality dissimilarity is akin to the difference between competing to win and competing not to lose. One is a positive mindset and one is a very clearly negative one. At the early stages of his life and arc within the story, Ichigo is fighting to not lose the people close to him. He's fighting from a place of fear. This fact is continuously reinforced in the series by characters like Zengetsu. These characters tell him that the act of saving people requires strength, and true strength isn't something that can be acquired passively. It's not something that can be wielded by a fearful person. It can't be grasped by the hands of someone with a weak grip. It requires the will of a king in order to take victory in the face of defeat. It takes instinct to acquire enough power to save people. In stark contrast to Ichigo's own somewhat confident persona, he is a deeply fearful person. He doesn't want to lose the people closest to him because he's felt firsthand exactly what that feels like. He's felt the pain of lacking the power to protect. 
Unlike his fellow big three protagonists, Ichigo's core goal from the very start of the series isn't one of acquisition, it's one of loss prevention. Luffy wants to become the Pirate King and obtain complete freedom. Naruto wants to become the Hokage and become recognized by his entire village. Both of these goals are, generally speaking, about a person desiring to grab hold of something that they do not already have. Luffy and Naruto are dissatisfied with what they have at the moment or they merely strive to gain something to complete themselves. For Ichigo, well, Ichigo just doesn't want to lose his family and friends. He's satisfied with what he had, but he's terrified that he can't keep it without the proper strength. It's why he decides that his goal will be to keep everyone that he cares about safe. That is his primary goal throughout the story of Bleach. You may say that every protagonist wants to keep the ones in their life safe, and while this is true, you are plucking out the context and importance of each individual's goals that to me paint just how quality these motivations are. Sure, Naruto wants to keep his friends safe, but the reasoning for that is simple. They are his friends and he cares about them. The same goes for Luffy. This aspect of their character is etched in stone and minuscule in comparison to their larger ambitions and dreams. This tiny motivation doesn't grow, it doesn't change, nor does it get explored in any depth because it is not the focus of their characters, but for Ichigo it does. For Ichigo, saving people and what is required to do so is an idea explored through the entirety of the series. It's something that from chapter 1 to chapter 686 is called back to and consistently developed. Why he wants to save people, what causes motivation, how he goes about saving, and even what goes into protecting the people around him are all concepts that Kubo explores for the character of Ichigo. Saying that he has no motivations or that his motivations are no different than any other main character to me is as strange as saying Deku has no motivations just because his goal at the end of the day is to become the world's greatest hero, a position which predicates itself on saving and protecting people. In both instances, a relatively common idea is tackled by a main character, but rather than be looked at on an extremely shallow level, it is handled with the same care and finesse as Luffy's entire pirate journey or Naruto's journey to become Hokage. In the same way that we wouldn't look at Luffy and Eren's motivations as the same just because they both desire freedom, I wouldn't look at Ichigo's motivations and Naruto's motivations the same just because they both, at the end of the day, like and love their friends and want to protect them. While significantly different in terms of presentation and execution, Ichigo's goal isn't any less impressive or important to him or the cast around him. I don't know man, but I'm just a sucker for this arc for Ichigo. Seeing him go from a passive protagonist who needs to act only in response to a threat to his friends to someone who seeks the thrill of battle, someone who can truly accept what it means to have the strength to save, is really cool to me. It's much more subtle than the goals of Luffy and Naruto, at least in terms of what his goal is, and that's okay. He doesn't have to scream it from the rooftops every time he's confronted. Oftentimes, real people's dreams and ambitions aren't as simple as achieving an external title. Oftentimes, it's about achieving internal peace and overcoming your own personal shortcomings. Contrary to somewhat popular belief, I don't think that Ichigo's goals are any less lofty than Luffy and Naruto's. Sure, it isn't as flashy as theirs, but I think desiring to protect as many people as you possibly can in a world where characters can destroy entire planets isn't a small task. It requires for him to change his entire framework of what it means to fight and be strong, and I can't possibly look at a journey like that and simply say that it has no meaning or that it lacks in terms of impact. Ichigo's dream requires that he faces an internal battle primarily, and something about that truly speaks to me. Now, fucking loser reasons for liking Ichigo aside, can we talk about how raw this man is? Wait. Ichigo has some really cool moments in the series, and as a product of Kubo's writing style, he also has access to a catalog of transformations that put most characters to shame. I mean, he has Shikai, Bonkai, Partial Holification, the different versions of his Hollow Mask, Don Guy, Mugetsu, his Power Ranger form, Full Bring Shikai, Full Bring Bonkai, and the forms that he gets access to in the Thousand Year Blood War arc. All of these are crazy cool forms, and when combined with some of the moments that he has, it becomes hard not to like him. Ichigo pulling up to save Rukia, stopping her execution, and immediately bought several uh, assistant captains all while his sword was put down goaded him hearing or he may ask him not to get hurt anymore and immediately stopping groom Dog's last attack goaded him being completely outclassed by ukiora and still having the audacity to smile in his face and declare that he can't lose goaded this man ichigo was simply put too f***ing cool. Just like most Bleach characters, Ichigo has a laundry list of one-liners that go insanely hard, and my lizard brain can't help but go crazy whenever I see those moments. Like, Ichigo swinging his sword at Genjo so hard that it creates a Gizuka-like blast of Ryatsu is already cool. But then telling Ginjo that what he just did wasn't a real Gizuga before charging up one and missing on purpose just to mess with him is so cool. 
And the thing is, he has so many moments like this sprinkled throughout the series that you're gonna have three or four really crazy Ichigo one-liners in every arc, and that's just wild. Blitzing Byaki and holding him at sword point, fresh after getting Bonkai is an example of one of those just ice cold moments from Ichigo. Not only is this moment the culmination of an entire arc's worth of training and personal development, but it's also just badass that Ichigo was so confident in his abilities at this point that he pulled up to Byaki Akuchiki and flexed on him. That's wild to me. Instances like this are a big contributing factor to Ichigo being such a well-beloved character among Bleach fans. As much as I love the deeper and more nuanced aspects of his character, I equally enjoy the point of his story where he just says fuck it and starts flexing on his opponents. Nobody can really look at Bleach and say that it doesn't have a style or flair for the dramatic. Even the biggest Bleach hater would be forced to admit that fact. Or maybe they wouldn't. I don't know. There are some really passionate haters out there. But as I mentioned earlier, Ichigo's relaxed vibe is a factor in his likability, and I think this sort of devil may care attitude mixes well with Kubo's sense of style. When you have a character design as cool as this and a personality to match, you are guaranteed some likability points in my book. It may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I can say with my chest, and many Bleach fans would be able to support this, that what Kubo decides to do with Ichigo is excellent. As the main character, it's pretty obvious that Kubo had to really go in on everything that makes Bleach so good. Depth rivaling his best characters, transformations cooler than most other protagonists in the demographic, and the personality of an introvert's dream friend, Kubo really didn't miss with the strawberry-haired substitute Shinigami. Bleach's return to form just has me really excited to talk all things Bleach, and if you guys want to see me talk more about Bleach characters and why they seem to be so well-liked within the community, let me know in the comment section down below, and consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you're notified to all of my Bleach uploads. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.